Hello, I'm Sandra, the creator at Sing, Play, Create, and today I have beat and rhythm activities galore for you. These are all fall themed, so I hope you'll keep watching to get all the activities for your music classroom. The activities in this video are all coming from a free resource in the Sing, Play, Create free resource library, but you can use these activities with any rhythm cards and steady beat charts that you have. They don't have to be for fall, so I hope you'll keep watching to get all these activities. There are six activities and five games. The first activity is a super simple one. I did this in my classroom and my students really liked it. It kept their hands busy and it kept their eyes busy and it kept them focused on what we were doing. And all it was is I took these thematic steady beat charts, I made enough for everybody in the classroom. You can double side them, you know, so you have one kind on one side and one kind on the other. And then I printed them and I laminated. This was something that I could use in a lot of different places. I could use it in whole class activities, small groups, and stations. You could also use it in several different grades. Sometimes we have students who move in and they don't know what you're talking about when you say the word steady beat. You can get out a steady beat card and have them tap the beat and show you that while you're playing this instrument, you're playing those heartbeats on the page. So with any song that you're teaching, you can not only echo teach as a chant, but then you can get out these beat charts and say, okay, we're gonna get out the beat charts and guess what? After we tap the beat, we're going to play the beats on instruments. So you can take it an extra step in between to help your visual learners or your students that need to see something and you give them the beat charts and they can follow along and you can put it up on your projector and you can tap it. You can also have students come up and tap the beat while you're walking around the classroom and helping other students. You can just put on some instrumental tracks and have the students tap the beat. There's so many different ways to use these. Like I said, you can use them with a song, you can use them with instrumental tracks, and you can use them to you in a small center where you want the students to play what they see. Or maybe you're putting the beat with the rhythm and you want them to learn how they work together. So you have one student playing the beat on a steady beat chart and another student playing the rhythm on a rhythm card. The second activity is very similar to the first activity. As you can see, we've got black and white printables that you can print out and have the students color. This is an activity if you want to put it in a center where you could have the students color color their little steady beat charts and then have a chant or song that they've learned really, really well and have them sing and tap to it while they're at their little station. Activity number three is creating rhythm patterns. And when I do these activities, I always like to do whole class activities first. It's important to me to establish how to do these activities before I even consider putting them in small groups. So I'm going to print out the cards and laminate them so I have them forever. And then I just use Ziploc bags, but there's lots of cloth bags and other ways that you can store these and then I put all of the fall ones in one large plastic bag so that I would have those and they're in a file drawer so I'd have them year after year these are my fall rhythm card manipulatives so one activity you can do is you can have everyone create a four beat rhythm pattern with you. It's really helpful to have some kind of song or chant that they're working on. So you can grab one of the other freebies like fall is here. Fall is here, fall is here. Birds and flowers disappear. And you can go through the chant, you've had them read the words, you've had them decode the rhythms. Now we can do another class time. We're actually gonna put those rhythms together. And we're just gonna have them choose one pattern and then have them play that pattern for the whole class time. So if I was doing this in the whole class, I'm not gonna give everybody the flashcards. I'm gonna have one set of flashcards up front and I'm gonna have four students come up and choose one card and then just put it on the board with magnets and then the whole class will play that rhythm pattern together during the song. Uh, you can do that activity with a song or chant or you can do it with instrumental music and you can also then change that into using several different instrumental tracks if you want to teach tempo. So you could have a rhythm lesson and combine it with tempo by choosing three or four different music tracks of different tempos and then the students have to play 
the rhythm pattern based on the tempo that they're hearing. You can also then have them split into two groups. So this is keeping our whole class together. So we're going to have half the class play a steady beat. Other class is going to play the rhythm. I would do that the second class time. First class time, we're just going to take turns creating some rhythm patterns. Probably not. Everyone's going to get a turn that time. I'm going to say, we're going to do this activity, kind of, but we're going to level it up next time. And then we're going to add in the steady beat. Or maybe we'll play two rhythms together. So I'll split the class in half, and I'll have half the class play this rhythm, and half the class play that rhythm, and see if they can keep it going as the music plays or as they sing. Now all of those ideas are not going to work for kindergarten. Kindergarten isn't going to use the rhythm cards. We're going to just play the steady beat, but I might use the flashcards that show the steady beat for them and have them tap them. And I'll choose students to come up and point to the beat, and that's how I would differentiate in kindergarten. First grade, I would do Ta and Titi. Second and third grade, I would add in those other rhythms. Those are some very simple games that you can play that are going to help your students decode rhythms and also give them the experience of doing it with the whole class in a very easy way so that later when they see sheet music or when you put them in groups, they've already had that whole class experience and know what to do with the rhythm cards and how to put four beats together. One last thing you can do with that game, you can also give each side different different instruments if you want to. You can even use pitched boom markers. You can give one side C and the other side E and G and have them play together so they hear a chord. So much variety and things you can do using just simple flashcard game. Next activity, once you've given your students a chance to play that rhythm game where they're putting four beats together and then they're playing it in a variety of ways, then you can have them color and create and you could have them pair and share. So you could give them the printable, they can color, cut, and use their own cards, and then they can put their pattern together. You could even do it as an assessment where you walk around and they just play it for you, and you could go around while everybody's practicing. If you want, you could have quiet music playing in the background for them to play it to, or just have them play it without the music. This is a really fun idea. I love color-coded things, and so I like to use them a lot in my classroom, and you can use chime, you can use colored xylophones, you can use bells, you can use boom whackers to do this activity, or if you've labeled your instruments with color coded dots, something. So what you can do, instead of printing the rhythm cards on white paper, you could print them on colored paper that matches like C for red. So then all the red cards would go in a pile and so forth going up the scale. You could put those in separate piles and they would choose the colors to create a little melody. You can do this activity even without using the rhythms on the cards. You can just make color-coded flashcards that have no note values on them. And you can use this in a station. It works really well. So I had the colored xylophones, and then I had stacks of each of the colors that are on the scale, and then the students could draw eight cards. I did eight because it's a little nicer to play eight than just four. And then they would put the cards in rows of eight, and then they could play their little melody. And that's just an experience and of hearing, uh, developing their inner ear. Oh, they're not going to be going, oh, yeah, the C is lower. You might ask those questions later. Okay, when you played the C, how did that sound, higher or lower? But they need the experience of playing and hearing before they can figure things out. So it's kind of like... You know, if you put a whole bunch of ingredients on the kitchen counter and they're supposed to end up with chocolate chip cookies, they might need, you know, 10 to a million times <laughs> to make the cookies, but you want to give them the experience of creating something. So that was always a fun activity and you could use that with uh, your K through your third grades. Then you could use the black and white versions and you could tell the students, okay, here's the colors in the scale. I want you to color, and maybe you just want them to do so me and la. So you're going to use, uh, it's green, yellow, and purple. You could use those three colors and say, okay, I only want you to use those three colors. You give them only those three colors of crayons, and then they color their so me la, and then they make up so me la or so la me, 
patterns and then they can play them and sing them. Maybe you use those cards then to introduce another song and say, okay, everybody hold up the card of the new note. Or when I sing this note, hold it up in the air. So you might say, if you're working on La, you could sing the song, and then when they when you sing La, they're supposed to hold up La. Using any of the rhythm flash cards or the color cards, or just giving your students another way to learn uh, the concepts that you're trying to teach them. So you're just creating a set of diverse activities that all are supporting one learning goal. So I hope that helps you with uh, how these activities work and why they can be really an effective part of your music classroom and an effective way for your students to learn. You can really reach them. Also, I think in the upper grades, especially third, fourth, and fifth, that playing games is the way to go. And it's important to start with the whole group first and really get the game down before we break them into groups. Maybe never break them into groups. Some classes cannot handle being in small groups and that's okay. We'll keep them all together because we want everybody having the opportunity to learn. So like I said, you can easily take these rhythm cards and differentiate the activities across the grade levels. With kindergarten, we can just stay focused on the steady beat. With first grade, we can start introducing a rest and how there's one beat that we're going to be silent on and it's going to be very visual. We're going to have students choosing cards and putting patterns together. So those are some ways you can use the flashcards so that they can visually see what you're doing. You can implement body percussion moves for them to play the rhythm patterns. You can implement instruments. You can divide the class into four groups and have different instrument in each group and even a different instrument pattern for them. So you could have four patterns on the board, have four different groups, and each group's playing a different rhythm pattern, and you're up there keeping the steady beat, hopefully. And that's how they're going to begin to learn how to put music together how it sounds to put it together. You might want to have pitched and unpitched in that kind of scenario. It just depends what your learning goals are. These activities are to support the learning goal, not necessarily just to be an activity unto themselves. So you want to make sure that if your learning goal is you want students to learn ta and tt rhythms, then all the activities are going to be based on learning ta and tt rhythms. The activities in this video are all coming from a free resource in the Sing Play Create Free Resource Library, but you can use these activities with any rhythm cards and steady beat charts that you have. They don't have to be for fall, so I hope you'll keep watching to get all these activities. There are six activities and five games. I appreciate you watching. I hope you'll drop a comment about how you use flashcards in your classroom and if this freebie works for you or what challenges you face or tips that you can help. We're all here to learn and every teacher learns differently and every teacher teaches differently in some ways. And so we're here to help each other. So I hope you'll uh, leave a comment below to help us out. I appreciate you. I know that teaching music can be challenging. All this differentiation that has to go with seven grade levels in short 30 minute class times, it is a huge challenge. Thanks for watching this video. Let's keep kids moving and learning with music.